Welcome back to the Wonder of Anime YouTube channel. My name is Lisa and this is it. This is the beginning of my Clamp Reread series and we're starting with Archie Zeta. If you want a little bit of history on what this series is and why I'm doing this, I'll be sure to link some videos where I've discussed this in the past. But generally this series is just me rereading some of Clamp series. Um, or maybe sometimes reading them from the beginning. I do have some clamp books that I acquired that I've never read before. And just deep diving it with my current perspective in the place that I'm currently in in life, as well as exploring some of clamp's themes that, as we know, clamp has intersecting universes. And there's some themes that they have that they carry out throughout a lot of different works and they manifest themselves similarly or differently depending on the series. So you're gonna get that here with me. Now, before I start the series, I do want to say, and this is just a plug for something not me related, but a good precursor to this series is the clamp deep dive video done by Crystal from Beyond the Bot. I'll be sure to put a link in the description box. She is a huge clamp fan as well, and she does this really great YouTube video kind of diving into clamp as a whole and their role in anime and manga from their very beginning. Just thought I'd, I would plug that because I think it's awesome and it gives a lot of perspective to some of the things that I will be talking about in this series. As I said, I am starting with RG Veda. Now, RG Veda was Clamp's number one debut official series. However, Clamp was an 11 member group and they had been doing doujinshi work prior to getting official. At the time of RG Veda though, the group had already been dwindled down to seven members and that was in 1990. And by the end of RG Veda at 1996, there were the four main members, which we know and love today. <laughs> RG Veda is, it, it's so funny reading it because I didn't read RG Veda when I initially read Clamp, like started my Clamp journey. I did not read it in chronological order. So reading RG Veda, I believe I read it after having read Savasa Reservoir Chronicles, XXXholic, Chobit, and reading it like that, I didn't really know or pay attention to the fact that RG Veda is really, really, really the blueprint of all clamp works. And so many of the themes introduced in RG Veda have carried themselves over 30 years into different clamp works. And not even, you know, we know of Savasa Reservoir Chronicles and XXX Holic, the sister series that revisits a lot of other clamp works and they, you know, bring characters and, you know, it's like uh, Easter eggs where the characters are from and they exist in multiple universes. Um, prior to all of that, RG Veda really is the blueprint and explores all of these themes that Clamp has made their signature theme throughout all of their work. With this series as well, I just want to say that this won't be a typical review series like my other series where I'm talking about anime or manga. Uh, this is more of a deep dive, a little comparison, how I'm feeling with the series and all of the takeaways that I had. RG Veda is also loosely based on Hindu mythology and RG Veda is pronounced Rig Veda. And it's very interesting the some of the characters or some of the themes generate from those Hindu mythology. And although I'm not familiar with Hindu mythology, it's very interesting to see that played out in a Japanese manga. RG Veda basically is the story of Ashura and Yasha and their journey trying to defeat um, this evil god king named Taishakuten, who basically fucked over the entire land. In his 300 year rule, he's killing people left and right, extinguishing entire tribes, and just making a whole mess of this universe that the previous God King did not. He, he ain't leave it like this. The RG Veda story itself, as it spans 10 volumes, is very complicated. And I think it would take me like a 30 minute video just to cover volume one. <laughs> of the of the series but within the RG Veda universe Yasha and Ashura the and the six stars they unite across different you know they all come together across different circumstances and they make their way to Taisha Kuten to fight him and defeat him everybody has their own motives why they want to defeat Taisha Kuten and it's very interesting to see Clamp explore 
explore those motives because some people are just along for the journey like Soma and you know Ryu they're kind of along for the journey although Soma is a victim of having her tribe extinct then you have Karura who was was like not about it until she had her personal loss she lost her sister and she was like, no, now I'm part of this journey and I'm going to go and kill Taisha Kuen. So everybody, all these characters um, are driven by their own personal motives. And one of the best things about Clamp is that when they have side characters, they often show you those individual characters, their motives, their thoughts, their feelings. And those perspectives really help tie in the story. And it's not always just the main character's journey. It also includes those side characters. And they do a very great job of showing you, you know, the things that the main characters don't know and how all of those pieces end up tying together. But throughout RG Veda, the constant themes that I feel are explored are the themes of your fate and destiny. The whole story starts off with the stargazer having a prophecy and you see in this story how all of these different characters come together to try to make the prophecy, prophecy happen or try their best to stop the prophecy from taking place. And they always do these themes of like destiny no matter how hard you try to stop destiny from happening the wheels are going to turn and it's gonna keep moving another theme that is explored is love and not just relationship love that I don't believe is a main point in RG Veda but there are love between companions between family members brothers sisters tribe communities that love theme is one that is explored and then kind of I'll get to it how it manifests itself in the end is very very interesting another theme that is explored in RG Veda I guess is a I would say it's kind of like what I mentioned about everybody having their own motive and that self-driven determination that people have and how all of those while people are all fighting for different things, somehow they come together. It's very interesting. But as I mentioned, the interesting thing about Clamp is, you know, RG Vade is the blueprint. And it has, as I was rereading it this time around, I'm picking up on themes that are in other series. And it was very cool to see. So one of the themes that I feel like started in RG Veda but became a clamp signature trope not saying that other series or you know other mangakas don't have tropes like this because obviously things you know not everything is new under the sun but specifically in clamp works they tend to have certain tropes that manifest themselves in different series and it's always like fun for me when I'm reading something about Clamp, tying it together or like, oh, this happens in another series. One of those tropes that immediately like from volume one when I was rereading this, because to paint a picture, I read RG Veda back in high school and I don't really remember much aside from the main point. One of the start of Clamp signatures is the funny character who secretly has a huge role and then is also really, really powerful, probably one of the most powerful characters in the series, but that isn't revealed till the end <laughs> or until later on in the plot. And in RG Veda, that character is Kujiko. They don't know what he is. Is he a demon? Is he an angel? How does he know so much information? How he got all the tea? Kujiko is that character in RG Veda. And he became one of my favorite characters in this reread. And it was so fun to see and kind of reading and getting to know more Kujiko immediately. I think of Faye from Zabasa Reservoir Chronicles where Faye is the funny comic relief. He makes the funniest jokes and is always laughing. Surprise, got a whole ass secret backstory. Surprise, he got all these powers. He's so powerful, in fact, that his power is sealed away. That immediately, I was like, Clamp, Clamp, I see you. I see how Kuzuko is the blueprint for Faye. Um, I also think Yukito from Cardcaptor Sakura is also kind of a play on Kujiko. Now, Yukito was funny. He's more like an airhead type of character. And then it turns out that he's he's actually one of the guardians 
of the Kloba Yui made from Klo himself. So that trope to me, I was like, Kujiko, I see you. I see you in that trope. The other trope, and I feel like these characters later on in Clamp series become different, but in this specific series in RG Veda is the tough guy with a soft spot. And that in this series is Yasha, the leader of the Yasha tribe, the main character of this RG Veda. We see that later on with Kurogane from Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles, where he's super tough guy, but he has a soft spot for Faye and you know, soccer on the gang, but specifically Faye. And with that, that is that trope that you see where Yasha specifically, because Yasha, we have moments where we do see him cry and his love for Ashura really comes through. Then we have this trope that Clamp did in a couple of beginner series. Immediately I think of, is it, I don't know if it's Clover, I don't know if it's done in Clover, but it's definitely done in Wish as well as, is it Chobits? I don't know if it's Chobits, but there, there's another series that I'm thinking of too, where Clamp has genderless characters and these characters are genderless for a specific reason. Now, I don't know, you know, because RG Veda is back from the 90s, but the concept of people being non-binary is not new. I know many people think that non-binary people just started popping up today. There have been non-binary people all throughout time. So I'm pretty sure, I don't know what Clamp's intentions were you know, why they use the tropes of genderless characters in different works. Cause I know in Wish there are multiple not like genderless characters because of what they are, but I don't know like Clamp's motivations for using uh, genderless characters. Now specifically in RG Veda, we have Ashura. Now I read RG Veda, the Tokyo pop translation, which uses he, him pronouns, but it is explicitly stated that Ashura due to being born of sin is genderless. So they are never going to be able to create, like procreate life and children. And that is because of sin. In Wish, the people that are genderless are genderless because they are demons and angels and they don't have genders. So again, it's like for specific reasons, but it's also very interesting. In RG Veda, the genderless character of Ashra is interesting because when I first read RG Veda back in high school, and I was pretty aware of, you know, them, there being more than just female and male. But when I first read RG Veda, I really thought that Ashra was female looked female. Again, I was 16 when I read uh, RG Veda. And I think I was also going off based on Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles where Ashura also exists and Ashura is more female presenting. Now that I have read RG Veda in the scope and the mind that I have now and just more paying attention because I knew that I was reading RG Veda to dissect it so I made sure I like took my time and I wasn't like rushing through as I normally read manga and I see that there are some pages where Ashra is drawn very feminine and then there's other pages where Ashra is also drawn uh more masculine and it is on purpose that they are ambiguous so you don't immediately think they're female or they're male now Ashra is a child, I would say maybe like 10, 12 for most of the series, but towards the end, they do take their adult form, which has very, very long hair. You know, they are wearing a lot of jewelry, a lot of bright colors that can be taken as feminine, but I also saw in their adult form that they did have masculine like looks. Like I really think it depends on which page you're looking at that they look female and male. But I thought that that was very interesting. Um, and it's one of those things where I'm interested in knowing, you know, what the Japanese version is before the translation, because, you know, a lot of languages gender, you know, gender people. And it would be interesting to see what it is, what those translations are without now, if that's translated, would they use they, them pronouns? I purposely use they, them pronouns for Ashura because they are genderless. But it, it's very interesting. And Clamp, that's also a signature of Clamp, not just the genderless characters where they have feminine presenting characters or and that are male, or they have 
uh, male presenting characters that are that are female. So those like the fluidity to me of that is always interesting. And the fact that they were doing this back in the 90s when this stuff was like taboo is very, very like cool to me. But I do know like the gender bent genre or subject, I guess, in Japan is also something that's popular. So that's something that is very cool. And I'm excited to kind of like see more of that as I go through this series. Another huge, like I said, the blueprint of everything in RG Veda is the destiny and fate and prophecies. We will see as the series goes on that there are prophecies in like all of clamp works they have or you know things that are predetermined as we get into tokyo babylon and x 1999 so it's interesting to see that origination here in rg veda and i feel like like when i initially read it like i was like yeah yeah prophecy whatever and now i was like i'm gonna read this prophecy and you see the interpretation on how those different characters interpret those prophecies this and this is for me that really honed in this time this time rereading rg veda is the theme of people doing bad things for love and for the ones that they love rg veda i feel like every single character did something bad because they love somebody like <laughs> one of the reveals in rg veda that is literally the end reveal is that Ta taisha kutin was in on everything the whole time and his evilness his callousness him destroying tribes and hurting people was all part of ashra senior's plan and you know this whole time we think that taisha kutin betrayed ashra senior i'm just gonna call him ashra senior for con convenience this is a male character ashra senior who is different from ashra they them the new the child person <laughs> so him and ashra senior are lovers and this is a reveal that happens at the end and my mind completely forgot this so i reread rg veda and i was like what the fuck i do not remember this happening but that is one of the themes where they yo he he all this evil stuff he did he did it out of his love and they were lovers and he killed him and he wanted to be killed by his love so that is the end reveal, but this is a theme that Clamp continues to explore as we see in Tokyo Babylon, in X 1999, we see this in specifically, I feel like the one that is very clear, like clear in my mind is Zabasa Reservoir Chronicles slash XXXholic, the Yuko and Fei D. Wong. I think his name is also Fei D. Wong. Him too, ruining the world just to make sure that Yuko was alive. So that is something in Clamp that is very, very like, who strong. And one thing too, as I, this wasn't on my list, but I kind of just realized this, <laughs> I'll add it on as a Clamp trope, is Clamp, I don't believe that they have specific yuri or yaoi series that are like specifically yaoi specifically yuri however it is no denying that they have yuri characters that they have yaoi characters and i say yuri characters yeah it is very very clear they make no lies no mistake they've done this again rg veda is their first series where they have gay characters in RG Veda, we have Kendapa and Sama who are lovers. There's no denying they love each other. And then we have this reveal of Taisha Kutin and Ashra Senior that they're also lovers. Clamp has always done that where they will have those characters that are in love. I feel like now as I will be rereading the, ser the other series, I may think of more clear examples. But specifically in RG Veda with the Taisha Kutin and Ashura Senior and Kendapa and Sama was clear, clear, clear that it was a love romantic situation. And I say that because we have series like Zabasa Reservoir Chronicles where Kurogane and Faye, I don't believe it's confirmed or it's very on the line like, is it love, like lover's love or is it like 
friendship, special friendship. Because oftentimes what happens too is that we ship characters that aren't canonically, canon, canonly gay or sh- or straight, gay, LGBTQ+. But we like ship them anyway. Whereas in this older series, RG Veda, like there's no mistake in it. Like, like Kandapa, for example, says like to Tano, like, I can't be with you because I'm in love with somebody else. Like I have somebody that, that I love. And I don't see that that has been done in Clamp in some of the newer series. Now that I will be rereading the series, I, I'll revisit this to see if I feel like that. But from my knowledge right now, I don't think it's been as explicitly clear in newer Clamp series as it has been in RG Veda, where we know Soma and Kandapa are lovers. They admit that, cool. We see Ashra and Taisha Kutin be lovers at this, you know, big reveal at the end. And that is said and cool. I know, you know, at maybe as I'm rereading the series, we'll see that differently. I'll see that differently. Um, but to my knowledge, it just has not been as explicitly clear in any other series. But I do know, for example, Tokyo Babylon and X-1999, where we have Seshiro and Subaru, as well as in X-1999, where we have Fuma and Kamui. But is that explicitly stated lovers? Like, there, the Clamp does this thing where you don't know. But in RG Veda, they said, nah, you know that these characters are together. <laughs> in a romantic sense. But overall, for me, those were the themes that stood out that we will see as the series go on, this series, this Clamp Riri series goes on, that are replaying itself. Now, there are also questionable things or things, like I said, Clamp does things that I'm not okay with. And one thing in specific to me that has been made unclear that I'm not clear about is the relationship between Yasha and Ashura. Ashura is this unwanted child. Yasha takes them in and basically raises them. Now, here's the thing. Ashura is 300 years old and they are like a child, but they grow up super, super fast. Like, not a lot of time has passed and then they're adult and then adult. It is very clear that they are meant to be together. But it is not clear if that is in a romantic sense or as the reader that bias is putting them together. Now we know in later Clamp series, for example, in Savasa Reservoir Chronicles, Ashra and Yasha are made to be lovers. But that is a completely different series. That is a completely different universe. I was unsure of rereading RG Veda, I was unsure the first time, what their relationship is. It's funny because Kujiko has like moments where he makes these jokes about Yasha being Ashura's dad and like, oh, daddy and stuff. But that is in the English Tokyo Pop translation. Is that in, you know, the, (laughs) is that in the series? I don't know because we also know that sometimes translations try to make things more palatable to American audiences. And this was translated, I believe, in the early 2000s. But then, so they, you know, they're on this journey together. It's like, oh, Yasha, like we're destined to be together. Obviously this prophecy. And Yasha lost his whole tribe. Ashura don't got nobody. Then Ashura kills everybody. And then at the end, when Ashura has been sealed, Yasha has promised, he promised Ashura that he would stay by their side the entire, like their entire life forever, ever, and ever. Because they're, they're the only two left of their tribes. You know, Kujiko sacrifices himself and brings Ashura back to life. And they decide that they're going to be together forever. In what capacity? Because I felt like some of it was bordering on lovers, which to me makes me uncomfortable just based off the fact that Yasha was kind of like raising them. And then makes me think of with, you know, the Inuyasha reboot, Rin and Shishomaru. So that's something to me that's questionable. Like, again, this is not something that is explicitly stated in what lovers, you know, what capacity is them being together forever. Romantically, you know, they're precious to each other. That's another language that's used like, oh, you're my precious person. 
but is it love? Is it, is it romantic love? And again, I, like I said, this might be my own biases because we read main characters and we associate love as romantic love. But, you know, again, it, it, there, and this is what has me hesitant because at the end when Kujuko, um, yeah, Kujuko is about to sacrifice himself, kill himself to bring Ashura back to life. He states to Yasha, you know, you guys are going to be together forever. And Yash, um, Ashura, they're genderless. They cannot have children. And is that okay with you? Because you both are members of extinct tribes. So that question there has me like, so is this more than romantic love? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Please let me know your thoughts on this because like I said, I I don't know if I said this. There are certain things in manga in general, anime or certain media that you consume where you have to suspend this belief. And I am somebody who is very passionate about stuff and you, I have to take it back to scale but some things are just not okay in my book and just do not like, for me, the fact that it's like, oh, you kind of raised me, but now we together as lovers, that's questionable to me. I don't care that, you know, had the circumstances been different, but I just don't, the fact that like he, Yasha basically raised Ashura, although it was a very short, like very, very short period of time. And then they're destined to be together. You know what this reminds me of and made me uncomfortable then too is in Twilight, the whole, um, I forget what the concept is called, where like these people imprint, they would imprint, oh, I imprinted on this toddler. We gonna be together when they grown up. Shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. I just, mm, no. And I could suspend, like I said, you have to suspend this belief. I ain't suspending that disbelief. But in general, back to the conclusion of this video. Having read RG Veda when I was 16, 17, rereading it now as an adult, I have such, aside from this issue that I just mentioned, I have such an appreciation for the series and the concept explores, especially love, loyalty, and destiny, especially the fact that People are challenging what they believe destiny to be and what they believe that fate is. And that to me is an amazing concept to be explored. Now, having read this series at the beginning of my Clamp Reread series and all those things that I pointed out, all those tropes, just give me a deeper appreciation for Clamp and feeling like wow like what a fucking masterpiece that y'all yeah, been doing these themes since day one to me that is just amazing and I of course I'm going to reread all the other clamp works but I'm really really glad that RG Veda is the first that I decided to do it in chronological order because I really really love RG Veda and this time around it like made me cry and I don't remember if I cried the first time and just an appreciation of the artwork and just how beautiful the series is overall it is just amazing and it's like the essence of what Clamp is and just like you know like I'm shipping people that I was like I'm shipping these people like I I think in my initial reading I loved Kandapa and Soma I love them. I still love them. And I I also do think they have a cameo together in Zavasa Reservoir Chronicles. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. They definitely have cameos. I'm not sure if they're together in the cameos. But then, then when you threw in Taisha Kooten and Ashra Sr., like them, them together, now in this new appreciation, shipping uh, Taisha Kooten and Ashra Sr., did not see that coming. I love them. They're my second favorite couple of the series because goddamn, you're going to kill tribes and extent people for that's how much you love. You going to kill me. That's how much you love me. Like appreciation on 10,000. And I am just, it was really good. I'm really, uh, I, I love it. <laughs> I really did enjoy it. Aside from the minor issue that I just went on a rant about, but I will be doing a sister series to 
um, this reread series as I will be comparing the anime to the manga with all the clamp works. Specifically for RG Veda, there is not a full anime. There are OVAs or OVAs, and I believe there's two. There's definitely two. I don't know if the two wrap up the whole story because I was thinking that I maybe it like I saw maybe something that it was canceled but there definitely are two ovas that covered the story so I am excited to jump into those and compare them to the manga but that has been it this is my first video for my clamp reread series RG Veda a beautiful story I think overall it definitely is holds up I definitely think it is timeless obviously it doesn't take place in real life time but it is just the themes in it and explored in such a beautiful way like I said it is the blueprint to the clamp universe and what a beautiful blueprint that is that you know because a lot of people start works and then like as they grow and progress and get better their works do not like you'd be like what what is this but it, it really is amazing and I'm I, I'm very happy that I'm on this journey of this reread series and I cannot wait to dive into the next series. But if you've watched this freaking five million hour long RG Veda <laughs> diet <laughs> video, thank you so much for sticking by me. If you've read RG Veda, let me know what are your thoughts about any of the themes or tropes that I've discussed or my thoughts, my personal feelings. Um, let's know. Let's talk about it in the comments. But thank you guys so much for watching and... I'll see you on the next video, which the next series is Man of Many Faces. All right.